This is the Washington delegates at the AIDS conference will see. Bright, white, and full of promise. Here's the DC they won't see at the intersection of Malcolm X and Martin Luther King boulevards. This is the only Obama sighting around here, and this sure isn't the White House. So why should delegates come here? Because this neighborhood has the highest rate of HIV infection in the city, a city that has the highest rate of HIV infection in this country. Sex workers here, we have the drug addicts here, and we have the alcoholics here. And that's why outreach workers are here, giving free HIV tests. A quick swab, a short wait, and you get your results. And free baseball tickets or food vouchers to sweeten the deal. We have them swab. Hazel Smith administers the tests and all too often has to break the bad news. A lot of them kind of expect something is going on because they know their behavior, their misbehavior, having multiple partners, IV drug users, different things like that. But the bigger shock may be the growing numbers. The HIV infection rate for African-American heterosexual women in this area has doubled in the past two years, from 6 to 12 percent. Health officials suspect many more have the disease and don't know it. That's why getting tested is critical. And while this woman and her husband get tested every few months, their kids don't. And I tell them, y'all out here having sex with these girls, then you better go get checked. Oh, mom, she all right. No, she can tell you she's all right, but that don't mean anything. Go get yourself checked to make sure. The D.C. Women's Collective offers the curbside tests. It says many women don't want to know their health status because they don't want the stigma that goes with it. We have women who have families turn their back on them because they assume that they can get the um, virus through casual contact. We have women who deal with stigma as far as their children are concerned, not wanting their children to be labeled as whatever labels people have placed on women who are living with HIV. Cheryl Smith got tested. It revealed she's Thanks. HIV positive. She urges her friends to do the same. And I think they should get tested because really it's killing a lot of people. Are you seeing a lot of that in, in your yeah, own community, uh -huh, in your yeah. own life here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The collective promotes testing and prevention through safe sex, turning female condoms into fun fashion to give them a more feminine image, from cocktail dresses to costume jewelry. Tinselin says she'd love to show off their work to delegates at the AIDS conference, but they're being told to stay out of high crime neighborhoods like hers. They're telling yeah. people who are coming to the World AIDS Conference not to come to your community. Not to come to the community is hard risky. to say because it's too risky, which is, I can't find the logic in it. Believe me, I struggle to, <laughs> to find the logic, logic. But what I would think is when the conference comes here and it comes to these communities, it would shed light on what's happening in the area. If we're bringing the whole world here, we can't just keep them in the... The, the upper echelon part of town. These people want the delegates' attention too. They want to remind policymakers that AIDS remains a threat, both globally and locally. Consider this, DC's rate of HIV infection is higher than that of African countries like Gambia, Senegal and the Congo. In fact, DC has the dubious distinction of being neck and neck with Nigeria, with the African American community bearing the brunt of the epidemic. Justin Terry Smith is gay and HIV positive. He shows me this AIDS quilt, a reminder to him about the consequences of denial. We don't like to talk about anything. People don't like, in the African American community, do not like to talk about things, especially important things that might have to do with health. Um, and that's why a lot of us don't perceive HIV as being real. He says far too many African Americans have been driven underground by social stigma perpetuated by the powerful black churches. And then your, your church starts spouting out hatred things, about, especially about gay people, um, about HIV, about how it's a dirty disease and only dirty people get this disease. Then, you, then that, is, that is an important part of your life and that important part of your life is basically feeding the stigma into the community and actually your self-esteem is lowered and so you think less of yourself. So now the NAACP is enlisting black churches, the cornerstone of the community, in the battle against the disease. The African American population in the United States is approximately 14 percent. Right now, African Americans make up almost 44 percent of all HIV cases. That statistic alone 
was really a driving force. We just pray, Lord, that you continue to allow us to be mindful of sisters and brothers who are living with the HIV virus, Lord. The group is urging influential pastors to use their pulpit to promote testing and prevention for both women and men. The pastors want to pass the message that this virus can infect anyone. And, and now we find out that it's not just uh, Haitians or Africans or, or, or the homosexual community or, uh, or, or IV drug users, but it's the person next door, it's our girlfriend, it's our partner, uh, it's right at home. Back at the Women's Collective, I wonder if stern pastors and condom cocktail dresses will really wake people up to the epidemic in their neighborhood. Hazel Smith has her own wake-up call, her life story. She's HIV positive and for years lived a drug-addicted denial. I went back out in the community and continued to drink, have unprotected sex, and do drugs. So I was spreading the virus right here in, in Washington, D.C. You know that now? Yeah, I was spreading the virus. She would eventually infect her husband. We have unprotected sex. And then finally when I got clean, I had to tell him. So he went and got checked and he was diagnosed with HIV. So um, it's only by God's grace and I didn't die, you know. But he died in 2004 from complications. So now, instead of being part of the problem, Hazel is part of the solution. So I come out in the community and do the same thing that somebody gave me. And in turn, maybe when I'm getting old, when I get old and can't do this anymore, that person that I help save their life, they'll go out and do the same thing and help somebody else. Survivors transformed into saviors as an isolated community learns how to save itself. Mark Kelly, CBC News, Washington.